what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel today today is really nice check it out beautiful so in the last video guys we painted the quarters the doors and the pillar on la panda and it is looking freaking awesome i rolled it out uh the sun was beaming over here a little bit earlier and uh just kind of letting it bake in the sun in this nice weather today and i'm looking at the paint turned out freaking awesome a couple of bugs landed on here from last night i guess there's one right there as well too but nonetheless the paint is already dry so that can be wiped off so i'm looking at the painted areas and uh um i'm seeing a lot more runs than i did yesterday so the ones that were here I used tape to take off the excess clear and it kind of settled a little bit but you can kind of see a little bit of wave but nonetheless this can be blocked out no problem just got to stay away from the edge we have a little bit right here still and a new one that i saw just now is this clear coat run right there these little two drips right here it's smooth here but two drips there uh, that can be blocked out it's also at a lower point of the car so it being blocked out and polished out you're not going to notice it i have a slight run right here very slightly that can be blocked off really quickly not a big deal and a little bit right there i'm not a professional by all means guys and um at the end of the day this is base coat clear coat we can polish it out even if it was single stage it could definitely be polished out like we did leo's car and on the passenger side there's no drips on this side whatsoever other than right here at the door there's about three four drips right here we can block that out no problem the pillars pillars looking amazing and like i said it's already dry to the touch and i'm gonna let it sit right here for a day and then i'm gonna move the car over there so that way i can move the all-wheel drive crx on board so we can start getting down with the turbo kit but today we're actually going to be headed over to higgins house and uh, if you guys don't remember higgins we went to go pick up an 89 civic hatchback si and we also went to the junkyard recently to go cut out a floorboard that would need a patch back into his car all right so Got my welding machine, got my bag of bodywork equipment, and got a spare spindle. Let's head over to Higgins headquarters. All right, guys so kind of losing a lot of daylight here i pulled up to the higgins headquarter a little while ago and we were just kind of hanging out so fred showed up with his junkyard cart one of his junkyard cart and if you guys remember we used this cart right here in the junkyard when we picked up two wheels and a bunch of parts and this thing hauled it all the way to the freaking lobby without an issue so the thing is when we had the wheels and stuff setting on here and while we were waiting in line the cart was kind of leaning too far forward where everything would have fell off the cart if i had leaned it like this so what are we doing here fred i'm gonna add this extension on here i'm gonna weld it here and weld it there so it'll fit like that so that way the cart would sit more upright upright so uh when we stack stuff like this um when we stack stuff on here like we did last time we can lean it while we're waiting in line instead of trying to hold it the yeah, entire hold time it, yeah. and uh fred fred knew i was coming here today so he knew i had my welding machine and he was like yo i'm gonna bring this cart just get it done but it, it's it's a uh, it's definitely a nice uh touch to the cart because it, it'll help stand itself up rather than us trying to hold it up so we're gonna be welding that for fred here in just a minute because he is grinding all the powder coating off of the metal so we can get a good clean penetration now nikki um pretty much cut out all of the holes in his floorboard that uh the previous person welded custom brackets for those seats we still don't know what seats these are guys a lot of you guys said they were like the first gen integra i can't seem to find anything on first gen integra i can't seem to find anything on canadian spec ef hatch but um the, these fitted in the car despite the uh custom seat brackets but if you guys know what these are let me know in the comments below i'll give you guys a quicker look at it closer look at it let me know if you guys recognize it but anyways 
Nikki cut out the holes that were in the car into a perfect rectangle section. So that way when we uh, do the patch, we'll, we'll make one fit that perfectly. So this is the piece we cut out from the junkyard from the red hatch. And uh, you can see these are the reference holes right there. And uh, we're pretty much needing this section now we could have just used any flat piece to weld in place right but because these has contours like these little tub or tubes we want to kind of match it so we're going to take measurements you know using reference points and then we'll try to cut out a very similar piece to patch that back in here this guy's been at work he's been getting a lot of yeah, stuff for for the car i'll, I'll kind of show you guys some of the stuff he has but Front end is definitely on. He um, went to work with the little frame on the side. He grinded all of this down right here. You can see that all grinded out. And he's got the fender headlights. He got a filler piece, the bumper on, just kind of resting on there. He's still missing a lot of the miscellaneous side brackets to you know hold the bumper up and all that. But um, everything is just kind of roughly in place. He has a new radiator. Is a new radiator? Yeah, new radiator, yep. Yeah, new radiator in place, reservoir, all that's in place. And uh, a couple other goodies that he got. Tail lights. These are the 8089s. Extra tail lights right here. And then he also got himself a another set of these are these are the new ones. Yeah, those are new ones. So these are also another set of replacements to replace the one that he had on the car, which was 9091 and they were cracked. Yep, they were cracked. Yeah, he also got a filler piece from an 8089 as well. But the thing is, once he threw it on, he realized that it didn't really sit. It didn't really sit right. If you look, kind of, kind of sucked in a little bit, and uh, we noticed at the bottom here, it's kind of folded in as well. So after further inspection on the inside, simply verified that the back has been hit as well, right there. So at this point. We're not even mad jipping the guy for another not all. 60 bucks for the car. $340. $340. $340. Yeah, so the car is definitely getting some work done, guys. And he's been at it with uh, piecing his car back together. But we're definitely making progress to getting this thing back to uh, its, OEM, its OEM state. Oh, shit. You got it. Hell yeah, dude. Thank you so much. Hey, you know what's funny? That's the only one that I have. Really? Yeah, it's the only one that I got. Do I need to, um, is it the same spline as the uh, outside one? Yeah, Tw 26 spline. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna replace this anyways though. Yeah, yeah, if you're gonna replace it anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. But it's definitely not bent like the one that you got. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't have the ball joint, so it's already pressed out for you. And, yeah. uh, this is pretty much to replace the one that was bent on the driver's side of his car. Because he compared the two and it was pretty, it was pretty bent. I mean, obviously it was hit on that side, but... Uh, he needed one. I had just that one. It's not even, no. not even equal. No. Nope. Yeah. The car, the car did have some like crazy camera on the, on the driver's side, and um. Yeah, you can see that the side dropped down there. Yeah, you can see that one's hella dropped. So. Well, this there's your replacement right there. So this is a separate one that was. So this should line up with this. We've Talk about, yeah, look at that. Perfect. There you go. The yep, hoarding does come in clutch sometimes. Yep. exactly five inches so we go to five she never told me that she wanted you to feel large that's what i always thought i felt okay that's our rough spot right there now we just gotta cut on the outside of that so this is about the rough area 
of a patch we need from this this piece to this floorboard now we're going to cut on the outside of the green and give it a little bit more meat so we can just trim to fit so right now what nikki's going to do is he's going to use a hammer and chisel and get off the uh the sound deadening right here we're not taking off a lot because we're only welding the seam and not you know the entire thing so he's probably going to chop off about half an inch um this way and here because there's no sound deadening there no sound deadening here and uh we'll get to trimming that I gotta catch Fred Samurai real quick. <laughs> this thing is sick. Perfect. I over, I overcut it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we just trim the fit, baby. Let's go. All right, guys, so we got this uh, patch welded in, and this spot weld right here actually went all the way through, so I had to patch that shut. This one just got to grind it flat, and there shouldn't be a hole underneath that. So I had to do this really nice and slow, one tack at a time, because of how thin this is. You can see I kind of did a little blowout right there, but that was also a hole already. So patched that up right there, had to use a wet rag to kind of tap all the flame underneath because of all of the... Um, the undercoating that, that was burning down there. Nonetheless, it is all welded up and just needs a quick little grind down to kind of clean it up a little bit. And that'll be that. Again, the mounting points for the seat, I believe he said it was this guy, this one, and the two that's over here, right? But if uh, the seat doesn't go there, like when he gets the 8889 seat, and uh, if there's a, supposed to be a mounting point here, we'll come back and we'll make a pedestal for that. We still haven't figured out what we're gonna do with this shit. I don't know if that's removable or not, but if we have to, I'm gonna cut a little square right there, put a nut, put a new plate, weld the plate back in, grind it flat. I did the same thing for the KRX, not a big deal. There are some random holes that I gotta patch up, which is this right here, that right there. This is also a hole. I have no idea why that's even there, but now I'm gonna go ahead and make the patch panel for that two square right there and get them suckers welded up as well. So we just cut out the pieces we measured right here, these two little square pieces, and I just trimmed it to fit. So we got this guy uh, fitted up, we got this one fitted up, and obviously not tacked in. That's how well it's uh, kind of sitting on its own. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the two back in and tack it all up, weld this all up like the other side, and we'll be done with that. So we can move on to Fred's project and get his thing over there all welded up as well. Got the two square patched up and um, you know, I don't know when I'll bring the welding machine back here again, but uh, we want to get as much of the holes welded up as much as we can. So right now, Nikki just ran a flashlight underneath the car. There is a little pinhole. I don't know where you see that right there that's where he glided off the old bracket and then there's a little slit right there I need to touch up but he's going to grind that all to bare metal i am also going to patch up this hole right here this random hole and then there's one more on the other side as well so while he's doing that i'm going to help fred with his little project he's already got everything grounded out and ready to weld so right now we're just going to figure out where everything's going to sit tack it and then you know weld this whole entire project up.
the reset. All right, guys, so we got Fred's little project all welded up and uh, it was a little tricky because some areas didn't have the paint completely out, but we wired it all down. Uh, Fred grinded most of the black off where uh, we were going to weld it. Now, we were supposed to weld it on the front, but I told Fred I think it'll look cleaner if we just weld it on the back side, which we did here and also here and also the two joints on the bottom. So he extended this leg because if you can see the original leg right here down low, um, when we had the two wheels in the junkyard stacked on this, we literally had to hold it upright because its leg was so short that if we let it sit on its own, the whole cart would lean forward and everything would fall off. So with this welded in place, extending it um, further down, it kind of puts the, um, the main base of the cart at a backward tilt angle. So when you flip this over and you stack whatever on here, it should sit upright on its own. So... Fred wanted to do this little project for a little while and uh, we got the welding machine out here so we finally got that all finished up and uh, you know he's about to take off right now and uh, Nikki's car we just finished patching up the uh, little extra holes that were um, you know that let light through and I literally just patched up this one right here and I'm about to do that last one right there so these are the only um, non oem holes that needed to be welded shut and um we'll know what we have to do once he gets the uh 8089 seats here to um like i said know what we have to modify to the floorboard to get those new seats to fit um but for the most part it should just bolt right on other than this one right here being welded shut not a big deal i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go ahead and finish the rest of uh the welds on the driver's side, patch the holes shut, and uh, I, think, I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. So before Fred gets on out of here, I'm gonna show you his cart in compact mode. So this is how he literally hauls it in his Honda Accord. It just sits in a trunk, you know, nice and uh, compact, where, you know, damn, so many damn hinges on here, Fred. <laughs> but um, it, it, it compacts pretty small and fits in his trunk with plenty of space in the trunk to put a dead body in it or something. But this is literally his junkyard cart. Show him real quick how to assemble this thing, get it ready for when you're about to get in the yard. Check that out. Leg comes out, arm comes up, fully extendo. Got the uh, little side wings right there for tool bag. You can kind of see the shape of this is kind of like the shape of the tool bag. So uh, Fred kind of thought ahead. You made this from scratch. Not all of it. Most of it though. Yeah. All these hinges and stuff, you made all that. Most yeah, of it. No, no. no? It's just a uh, um, flight attendant little luggage. So who'd you beat up for this? What? Who'd you beat up for it? A flight attendant? No, I bought it. <laughs> well, regardless, it's one of Did those I, little... I changed the wheels out. And he changed the wheel to uh, fit the junker terrain. So yeah, um, he took a simple cart and made into one of his own junkyard hauler. And I got to show you guys his other one, the other uh, electric uh, wagon, yard dog. the yard dog. Yeah. Maybe if I uh, can get a video of it not being a potato, oh, I'll, I'll stick it at the end of the video or something. It's, it's gonna show him riding this thing around the junkyard. I got to show it to you guys. So we are pretty much wrapped up inside the car. We got that giant hole patched up and shaped just like the floorboard should be. And uh, we got the side hole patched up. We got this side hole patched up. We got the two square over here also patched up using this, this donor piece we cut out of the junkyard. Definitely made use of that. But again, guys, uh, we came here to do that. I wanted to do some body work on the frame where we replace the bulkhead right but we kind of ran out of time today uh not a big deal though because this car is not going to go in paint for a little while so we can always come back and situate all of that um we helped fred out modify his junkyard cart and uh this guy right here was waiting for the damn mailman to come here all yeah, damn day because he finally okay. got what he's been chasing guys right here we have ef hatchback si hubcaps specifically from the hatchback just came in the mail today and a uh, big shout out to who sent this to you uh fat boy 89 si from jersey on instagram on instagram man big yeah. shout out man this right here is a hard piece to find and he had them sitting around so uh, he sent them over to higgins to put onto his car can you guys see it now 
Yeah, dude, I, I can definitely see it. Um, but yeah, like I said, he wanted to build this car to OE spec, and this is definitely going to really give it that OEM spec, how it came from factory feel. He also got the shift knob, the matching shift knob. If you guys have never seen the SI shift knob, this is it right here. It's funny because I have like one of this somewhere. I just don't know where. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't remember the last time I had a stock shift knob in my car, but it. yeah, it's easy to lose once you take it off, but I'm sure it's somewhere sitting in my garage. Um, aside from that, we definitely made some progress today, guys. And uh, Higgin is going to, maybe he's gonna travel south. I might be mobbing with him to go pick up some seats for his car because the seats that were in here was obviously the reason why we have those holes but he wants to get the 89 si seats that's actually going to be traded for this bumper right here this is a jdm ef9 bumper that he uh just kind of have sitting here that he's not going to use and somebody's willing to do a straight trade no it's cashing he's cashing uh he's cashing 200 dollars on this side plus the uh Giving me the, uh, the seats, for, the the seats for this J bumper. If you guys know, man, the J bumper, the Jaden front end for the CRXs, the sedans, the hatches are really skyrocketing right now. One, they're super hard to find, and two, and if if you do find them, they are expensive. So this bumper is just a spare sitting around. He's gonna trade it for the seats for this car, and you're gonna end up needing the back seats as well. Need the back seats, so yes. Back seats. Need so if anybody got the back seats, 8889 SR the same. Yep. yep. 8889 spec SI hatchback seats. If you guys got them, if you guys are willing to ship them, link up with Higgins Built on Instagram. Higgins Built, put it right here on the I screen. The rear, I need the rear seats. And this guy, you know, we, we kind of talked about, he kind of contemplated about starting a YouTube channel, uh, kind of showing the build series and kind of taking you guys along um, on building this car. If you guys, if you guys want to see Higgins start a YouTube channel and start vlogging this car when I'm not here vlogging it with him. Yeah. Leave a comment down below because I think it's a great idea for him because right now um, he's just doing some, you know, some side work and stuff to bring income in and, you know, really just keeping himself busy. But I know he enjoys working on cars. So if Higgins can grow on YouTube and make something of it, that'd be freaking awesome to see. And that only means a lot more content coming from him will be shown on the channel other than your typical small Instagram stories. So. We are gonna wrap up today's, tonight's video, guys. Um, I can't feel my hands. I already got all my tools loaded up. Fred's already gone. Higgins just finished cleaning his stuff up as well. Gotta get his car into the garage. But if you guys enjoyed today's video on Higgins 89 hatchback SI, be sure to leave the video a thumbs up. If you guys wanna stick around and see, I think what we're gonna do tomorrow is, I think we're gonna be boosting the CRX. So if you guys wanna stick around and see that, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. And I burned my finger too, dude. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs>